Fun fact on this channel, when I did the Linux 30-day challenge, that was on Fedora. The very first operating system I decided to make my daily driver was Fedora. So it's kind of fun. It's like uh, returning home, like a full circle. It's been a year since I started the YouTube channel, coming up on a year in November uh, of Linux, and I feel like it's just the perfect time to return to my home, my roots of Fedora. So with all that said, let's jump on the desktop, get going on configuration of Fedora. Uh, fun fact here, I didn't go with the vanilla spin. I went with KDE, which should come as no shock to anybody that watches my content. All right, so I've already done pretty much all the main setup. I've installed it. I've already done all the updates, which you should always do on a fresh install. And I'm using just using the spins.fedora uh, address for downloading this one. So everything's stock at this point. I did change the wallpaper because the Fedora 31 wallpaper looks like this and it's pretty ugly. Uh, also, when it comes to other aspects, I changed it to a dark theme and threw some widgets. These are just uh, KDE widgets, nothing big here. Uh, so no customizations really been done on this just yet. Uh, just the start menu, which I do on all my KDE installs. And then I just simply went to panel options, add widgets, and then added all this. Like this is simple system monitor. Everyone always asks about this. This is just a widget I dragged and dropped over. And then I grabbed these couple of monitoring things for, for hard drive usage, web usage. And uh, this is just have something cool on the screen. I don't mind so much, but uh, this is my KDE setup. Pretty much stock out of the gate. Now let's fix up our stock. Fedora install. Now, if you're not running KDE, that's completely okay. We're going to be dropping a terminal. You can easily do all these things in GNOME as well if you're using the vanilla. So first up, we have to install RPM Fusion because it's hard to install Steam, Lutris, and all these other things just using the default repos. So the easy way to do this is just copy and paste this command line. So we're going to copy and paste this, and you can find this at rpmfusion.org forward slash configuration. And we'll copy this and we'll launch into terminal. Now I did install terminal, but I haven't customized it yet. So let's uh, let's do some customization, remove the borders, uh, go into profiles, change our font up. I always like mono space, but I like to take that from a 10 to a 20 because I'm blind and we'll go colors. And I like the green on black a little bit better. Background, I like to add a little opacity, about 78, sure. All right, this gives us a little bit more of that and um, we'll go ahead and add our shortcuts in as well. And we'll make this one Terminator and we'll launch it with just a super T, apply, Dolphin, uh, Meta E is also okay. All right, cool. So we've added those and we'll need to log out for that. So we'll go ahead and simply log out and we'll log back in. All right. And I also wanted to do like Vivaldi and those types of things. So we'll, we'll change that up as well. Let's launch into terminal and we're just going to copy this guy and paste it. This adds those RPM Fusion uh, repos, which it should update automatically here. We'll say yes. And it added those. So now uh, we'll exit that. Um, other things, I like to install Vivaldi, so I'll probably go ahead and do this. Remember, if you're using Fedora, CentOS, rail-based systems, it uses the RPM packages instead of uh, DEB. So it's not Debian-based at all, so uh, good to know. Go ahead and save this version. Um, I could open it, but you know what? I'm going to just save that for now and probably do that offline because I like switching off Firefox and using Vivaldi or even Brave. Uh, either one's pretty good with me. Now, normally I would pull up like the Lutris and start installing a bunch of dependencies. However, we don't have that luxury because there's no how-to guide on Lutris on how to set this up for gaming. So we're going to just try and install Lutris and see what it grabs. 
and we'll go ahead and hit yes to this. As you see, DNF does a really good job with dependency resolution. Look, it's already grabbing wine. It's grabbing a lot of the libraries that we need. It's grabbing all of our message drivers. Um, this is really cool. One of the, my favorite things about Fedora is once you install that RPM Fusion package, man, it does such a good job of picking out all these dependencies. All right, looks like Lutris is now installed, so let's go ahead and go into Steam. Now we could have probably done Lutris space Steam, but I wanted to do each separately just to see if it grabs all the dependencies for each one. So let's go ahead and now do this one. And if we look here, look how many dependencies it's grabbing for Steam. This is mainly for the 32-bit libraries, it looks like. Uh, you can tell 32-bit because it says I686. So uh, that's really pretty sweet. If uh, it installs it that easily, uh, Fedora might become a pretty good recommendation. I might start making a lot more Fedora videos if uh, these two things are that simplistic. All right, it looks like it's adding a key. We're gonna go ahead and allow this. All right, looks like Steam and Lutris are now done just using install Steam and install Lutris. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Let's see if they launch real fast just to test that out. Here's Lutris. We'll say do not display again and okay. So we got our basic Lutris install, which is pretty cool. We'll go ahead and throw dark theme on, change a couple preferences here. Uh, look at that, it even has enabled game mode by default. Ooh, this is looking really, really nice. Um, I'll come back to this, but let's go ahead and launch Steam now. And see what happens when we launch it. Little bit of a delay when I clicked uh, in launch Steam, but it, it chugged along. That was about a five second to six second delay, but it's probably because it's the first launch. So it's downloading the massive update here. And I'm kind of excited because this is, really really easy like I probably just jinx myself because I feel like something's just gonna break at any moment it never goes this smooth wow there we go we're at our login screen so I'm gonna go ahead and log in and we're in so uh, we already have everything set up I don't want to install a bunch of games because I want to first get our secondary hard drive set up overall though this is straight just hit install and go Make sure you get that RPM Fusion library going first. Obviously, that's the first thing for almost any of them. Um, but I'm kind of curious to see what the gameplay looks like here. I probably need to reboot first just to make sure. But uh, let's do like getting over it or something like that uh, this time. Just to switch it up a little bit. Do a little native uh, Linux game. And this one's pretty small. All right. It looks like it's downloaded. Let's go ahead, launch into this and see how it plays if you can just play a basic game real fast. All right. Pretty easy enough. Ah, all right, well. Why did I pick this damn game? Ah, oh, it sucks. Don't ever play this game. I'll understand if you have to take a break. It's one of the most unusual and unfriendly games of its time. In it, your task is simply to drag yourself up a mountain with a hand. Oh! And that act of climbing in the digital... Frustration is Ooh, come on. No! And it's no! Of building ah, there we go. All right. Ha-ha. to me as I was building this Come on, Cauldron guy. You can do it. You can do it. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is a fun game. You guys should totally try it. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, it looks like it's playing quite smoothly, I might add. Um, I think that's enough testing. All right, last thing, let's go ahead and organize that uh, secondary drive. I have a two terabyte drive in there with some games on it. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, edit the F stab for this one. And we'll do a sudo blkid. 
we'll grab the UUID and go ahead and tack this on. Um, looking at this, I believe it's the one labeled Linux data right here at the top. Actually, dev SDA one. So that one right there, we'll go grab the UUID because anytime you do FSTAB, you should always edit using the UUID. All right, we'll go ahead and map this guy to sudo UUID. We're going to put this in media, two terabyte drive. This is going to be an ext4 drive. We're going to mount it as uh, read, write, execute, sign UID 1000. I believe that should go ahead and make sure it's assigned to my user. And then, of course, zero, zero. Now, uh, before we do this, let's write this out. Exit. Go over to the media directory. Sudo make directory two terabyte. Sudo ch own Titus colon Titus two terabyte. And now we should be able to do sudo mount all. And I messed something up here. Wrong file system type. I did say ext4. So let's uh let's look at our fstab one more time. You know what? We're gonna go ahead and remove that portion. Let's see what, yeah, using the UID, I don't know what I was thinking there. All right, so we got two terabyte. We'll go into two TB, just do a listing, and I see a time shift folder. We need to go ahead, remove that, because that right now is assigned to root. Now we will assign time shift and, and set that up probably at the end here. I've already set it up a bunch, so I'll probably not actually record that section. If you have never set up time shift, I'll link to it up above in the title card so you can easily set that up because you should be using a backup on everything, whether it's Arch, Fedora, or uh, any Ubuntu spin, all of them should be having some type of backup. It, it'll save your bacon, and uh, I love time shift. Go ahead and open up uh, our file explorer. Why... Uh, time shifts being removed so might get a little sluggish here um, probably one more thing is to add just a symbolic link into your home directory so we can easily access this so we don't have to go to like uh, type it manually into the address bar here so um, why it's removing that let's go ahead and uh, be a little impatient and uh, make that symbolic link so we'll go ln dash s and then we'll do media to tb to our home directory and say 2tb this just makes it easy to access this drive so we can just grab it from the home um it's not necessary it's just something that you know i feel like doing so we'll go ahead exit that and there's our extra drive so we have all of our stuff in here so let's see games I think I, I'm going to have to reinstall all these games. Now, Warframe, yeah, that's an old one. I think I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. I found that uh, Warframe works better in Steam Proton now, which is amazing. When I first started this a year ago, it didn't work at all, and then it worked kind of crappy. But now, uh, Warframe works almost perfectly if you install it through Steam. So we're not going to mess with that. Um, World of Warcraft Classic is there. Uh, let's go ahead, grab this out of here as well. I don't know why I have two gaming folders, but we'll just go ahead, move it over here, and we'll remove games too. And our Steam library, I think we can go ahead and import this in. Let's launch back into Steam and see if it can grab some of those games. So let's uh, go to here and you see there's nothing installed other than the getting over it we just played we're going to go ahead and install this on an actual steam library so we'll go into settings under downloads you'll see steam library folders click this add folder and this is where we go ahead and select that drive so i think i can access it by just going into media to tv and steam library and then this should say, yeah, it does. It has four games, um, free space, use space, all that. So let's go ahead and say make its default folder. Um, that way, any games that get installed after this, this is the default, and hit close.
Now let's look back through here. You'll see Gremlins is already installed. Uh, Final Fantasy VI, which I've used a lot in other videos. Shovel Knight, and of course, Warframe. So that's pretty awesome. All that just imported back in. I didn't have to reinstall games or any of that business. It just whoop, grabbed them right back in from my other drive. So our secondary drive set up, everything looking good. We're looking like uh, uh, we went ahead and deleted our old backups from the old system. Uh, now we could reinstall these Lutris games. Now, I've already kind of gone over in a past video, but you can't just say, hey, launch World of Warcraft Classic or import this because it needs to remake some of those dependencies that these games rely on. So what I like to do, let's say if I'm reinstalling this one, I'll just rename it and then just put two and rename this and put two. So before we set up these old games we already downloaded, we already renamed the folders, but we need to point the default directory to be this external drive. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go into system options and we're just gonna go 2TB forward slash games. So that will be the actual default folder. We'll hit save. Now we can go into our browser. We'll go to lutris.net pull up one of these games and reinstall just the installer. And you'll see the path is all correct. And this goes ahead and reinstalls like uh, Gecko and a bunch of other uh, dependencies that World of Warcraft Classic needs. Uh, so we'll go ahead and hit install here. All right, it looks like this finished. We'll go ahead and close. It says something crashed there. I think that's false. We can just go ahead and ignore that. We'll close out of our browser and you'll see it actually is installed. Now, here is the actual install directory. Here is the old one from our past install when we were running Manjaro. So it's pretty simple. We'll just move this one to the trash, go back, rename this one, and just take off that two we added. And then we'll go in, launch it, see what happens. So on the first initial launch, now it's checking to make sure all the data in integrity. This is roughly, I think for classics, about like 15 gigs or something. Let's see what the official download size is uh, after doing this trick. So the download size is roughly 30 megs. And, you know, that was just probably the last patch that I hadn't I launched this since I, I last had it installed. So uh, there we go. We can actually go ahead and hit play. Oh, I I, <laughs> I accidentally, I, I'm not actually subscribed to WoW right now, but you get the idea. I'm sure that would work just fine. Um, I'll go ahead and probably do it for Diablo 3 too, but for this video, I just kind of want to show importing like a old install as just kind of a bonus here at the end because uh, too many times people have to like reinstall everything and uh, if you're jumping around and distro hopping a bunch, uh, a lot of people don't realize if you just had a secondary hard drive with all your games that you play, reattaching everything literally only takes five to 10 minutes if you know what you're doing. So as you see in this video, uh, I reattached almost all my games. That's a, about 100 gigs worth of download, downloaded games, and, and probably actually more than that. So uh, this is pretty powerful. I absolutely love this. So now we can play our Blizzard games. We can play our Steam games, all on Fedora 31. So there we go. That is Fedora 31. Ah, it's so gorgeous. Other than that nasty wallpaper. I mean, the Fedora team, great job, guys. But dude. Pick out something else for the wallpaper. Yeah, this one was horrible. You guys suck at picking wallpaper. Uh, so anyways, that's my only criticism of Fedora. Uh, other than that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, thank you to all my patrons. And before I let you go, know that I will be expanding this series. Expect more Fedora type videos as I will be just demonstrating everything uh, on my studio PC here and it will remain fedora so it'll be kind of fun seeing how the gaming progresses i'm i'm curious to see how all this works out and a little bonus here at the end i want to really get into containers a little bit more and fedora is excellent with containers so uh that's another ulterior motive here on top of, of what i'm doing so one i wanted to see if gaming could work but two 
I really wanted to jump into some container type content as well. So I'll be able to do that easily with Fedora. And with that, guys, I'll see you in the next one.